Fuel is the official podcast of the 434th Air Refueling Wing. Join us for airman connections, leadership insights, mentorship, and happenings mixed with some fun and humor. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any person or business is ever intended. Welcome to the April uh, 22 uh, Fuel Podcast, and it's our, our 12th one. It's one year. We made it. It's our one year anniversary. Yeah, we didn't get canceled, uh, but I don't know who would cancel we're us. Still, we're still young. Yeah, that's it. there's a, one of you five out there that are listening that you have the ability to cancel us. Don't do it. So, please, uh, please, I, please, I, please don't do it. Yeah, I am uh, the command chief here in the 434th, Nathan Parks, Chief Nathan Parks. And as always with me is Tech Sergeant Josh, the Dream Weaver, which now you've had this, this, uh, you know, I came up with that like on the first podcast. How, how's that? How do you like the nickname? You wouldn't believe the amount of people that that's all they call me now. Yeah, the dream. Uh, yeah. As soon as they say, they just, hey, hey, dream, how's it going? Yeah. Like, Not my name, but all right. That's my brother knows you as his, the, <laughs> it's the dream. So I and said, I don't I was even know to, your brother. Yeah, I was like, I was talking to Sergeant Weaver the other day, and he's like, the dream? Yeah. I was like, yeah, the dream. So, <laughs> so Someone's dream. Yeah. So uh, 12 of these bad boys, uh, actually, I think we had a little extra special edition one once in there, so... We may actually have 13, but but 12 really. Hey, if uh, if you're liking it, uh, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, Josh and I just talked about that. I have no idea what that does. <laughs> but I every podcast I listen to, they say, hey, hit the subscribe, subscribe button. But really, uh, it helps you find the podcast easier, I guess. And it, it tells you when we got a new one showing up. And uh, I don't know, maybe... We're pretty consistent though on when we release it. So yeah, you should just know the Wednesday before the UTA, it's coming the UTA, out. It's coming out. So, hey, this is a great UTA too. Um, hopefully we're going to have a little bit better weather. We're, we're recording this one a little bit earlier um, just because of, of spring break and, and some vacations and stuff like that and who we wanted to have on. Uh, but a uh, lot of things going on in the April UTA. You have that speed mentoring uh, at lunchtime. So go over there, uh, get some people to look at your career and kind of help you through um you know, maybe, maybe get an outside look at things, someone that's not in your direct uh, chain of command. So, so maybe get some, a different perspective on your career. So uh, that's awesome. You got the sapper 0.5 K always fun. There's um, donuts. Yeah. There's a, it is literally a cookout followed by a 0.5 uh, K walk uh, that or ends run up, or run. Yeah. Or run last year. It was in the rain that ends with the uh, donuts. So no, 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 no. Doesn't end with donuts. Starts with donuts. No, donuts are halfway. So no, you can right. hard that's load right. as you're, yeah. yeah. They, just, they do do that because we get a little tired. If you start cramping, there's yep. a donut there for you. And so uh, go over there, get registered and, and come out and support this great event. Uh, and those, the team over there is, is doing amazing things and a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, there's the LRS uh, assumption of command. Uh, so get out and, and see that uh, the step two packages are due. So not some something that's not so fun to talk about, I guess, or, or it could be fun if you get promoted. But let's get those turned in and, and let's recognize the airmen that deserve to be promoted to the next rank. Uh, the final four. Final four is this weekend. It's, uh, it has nothing to do with the UTA, uh, but is also uh, very fun. My and, favorite time of year. Yeah. And very encouraging is March has been maddening. I mean, it is the madness is is not high this year and then soar so the the chapel staff puts on a great uh lunch and learn uh opportunity for you to come out and and get some new topics and sit around and talk and and fellowship so uh check those things out have fun at this this april uta we have uh there are i think last uta may have been the first one but uh the first time since i've been here was last uta that we had zero restrictions no mask no testing no nothing just show up and let's get after it so um and let's get after our our first guest here so or our only guest i, I was gonna say i yeah. think you're yeah. making this longer than what i thought it was gonna be but yeah that, that's what usually what i do i've got a gift for yep. that <laughs> so um but last year we started this this podcast with colonel pemberton and, and he he showed up here about a year ago and it returned here from from being gone for about 10 years. And so uh, we're going to get into talking to him on how he feels like it's going and where he feels like it's going. So here we go. 
All right, Colonel Pemberton, uh, welcome to the second time your repeat uh, podcast uh, guest. So, uh, sir, welcome to the, the podcast. Thank you. I'm surprised you asked me back, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, I thought I did so badly poorly last time that I'm like, yeah, we don't want him again. Are you, are you surprised that we asked you back or are you surprised that we're still doing this? Like, which, uh, yeah, no, so. no, I think it's still good that you're doing this because you've highlighted just a lot of the fantastic people we have in this wing and highlighted the amazing jobs that they're doing and the accomplishments that they're doing and the um, just what makes Grissom such a great place to work and uh, just what makes the 434 such a great wing. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so a year ago, uh, we had you here. Been a year already? Yeah, it has. Wow. It has. It's been a year. And, um, you know, you had just came back here from being gone for 10, a little over 10 years, right? Yeah. Uh, and and right. you you took some... Uh, journey around uh, Africa at different places and uh, took, I think, a staff job in there and then a couple other, like a, a wing commander job, group job, and, and a couple right. other jobs. And so you got back here and and there I think there was some, a couple different pieces for you. It was, it was professionally, it was kind of a lateral move, right? Because you'd already done wing sure. commander. Sure. And, but it also, you know, took you to, this was going to be your, your final tour before you retire. Have you given that any second thoughts or are you uh, still going to retire? Second thoughts. I'm still going to retire. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I guess it would be what day will yeah, I retire? Right, yeah. we, as we get closer, get, boy, I'm telling you, chief, this is getting tougher we'll get, and tougher. We'll get, uh, but, uh, we'll get into that. So, yeah. so hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into how, uh, my, my comment of, Hey, could we just make it to next week? sir? like, can we make a decision next <laughs> yep. thing? But, uh, so you came back here not just for that, but also you know family. You're from here, right? And, and you brought it back for a family. So, uh, how has that met that expectation of it of has coming back it now? has yeah. uh, because we've been able to get closer to uh, certain close to my son before he passed, uh, closer to my daughter and our new grandson. Mm -hmm. uh, so with them being down the road, that's been that's been a true blessing. And then with my father in law and uh, mother in law that. Uh, my father-in-law just passing away that it that has allowed us to be closer to them and visit them a little bit more and put some uh, uh rekindle some relationships so yeah, yeah absolutely that that goal has been met if you will yeah so so homecoming if you will and, and it's neat to to kind of go uh with you out to to lunch or or mm -hmm. different things i i spoke uh this over the last summer i think it was last summer at uh, your, your sister-in-law, Terry's yeah, my sister -in -law like, is, uh, and everyone family. seems to know you in the different places. And, and then we were eating yesterday and someone come up and was like, uh, Tom Pemberton, man. I, you know, <laughs> Delbert so, Metter, what a great guy. Yeah. He was a, he was a great person for many years participating here in the safety office. And yeah. So, so I'm sure all of that, you know, we got some, some greatness there, but, but you came back at a time where, uh, you know, we were in the middle of COVID. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and, and, and we came back and and I remember you and I talking like uh, when we first got here, I was like, hey, I think we're on the back end of this. You know, like I think <laughs> oh, we're on yeah. the up and up. We're almost done with this <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, man, did we underestimate so, that whole So deal. you said I made a lateral from the wing commander to wing commander. The only difference is I was not the installation commander at my last wing yeah. commander job. So when you step into the role now, you're an installation commander, man, a little bit more different spin to it because you – you own, you know, that that knife cuts both ways. Yeah. You own now the base and you have to make the decisions for the base proper. So it's a little bit more um, detailed, I guess, yeah. uh, a little bit more responsibility, I guess. So we, you know, we, you step into it with COVID. It yeah, gets, step into you know, it COVID. is a good word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. To, to describe it. Uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the COVID kind of ups and downs and, and hey, we're out of it. We're back in it. We're out of it. We're back in it. Even to the point of just a few months ago in February, we had our highest COVID numbers, right. you know, that we've ever had. And then here we are a few months later and we have, we, you know, we just talked about in the opening is we have no restrictions you know, right. on the base. And then, you know, we've got that. And then uh, we had Corporal Sanchez, of course, the the tragedy of that and, and, but being able to welcome him home, but just the, the, the reminder of what we do and, and the impact of things uh, we Wait, have. Let me tell aside on that chief. I was so proud of the base for doing that, hosting him and his family here. Uh, we really uh, honored him and his yeah. family very well. And uh, just seeing those, Everyone lining the streets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Seeing everybody lining the streets 
as he uh, goes to lay to rest. That was that was humbling. Yeah. Yeah. And not just that, but the community, you know, and, and yeah. we, we talk about that a lot is all the way I, over. To yeah. The, I don't if people who haven't really been outside of Grissom don't understand that every community is not this supportive. Yep. Right. There, there's other communities that Corporal Sanchez could have came back to that. Mm, they wouldn't care. Maybe they wouldn't who, have cared. Who, who's yeah. that? Oh, we and don't and know so that the way the community, I mean, just line the road and yep. they, I think the, the motorcycle procession behind the funeral. 45 was, minutes of yeah, motorcycle. 45 minutes of motorcycles. And, and they talked about when, when he had reached the Logansport, um, the motorcycle procession was just ending yeah. here. And, and so that was that line of just amazing know, that. And, and so, you know, that, that community outreach. And then also uh, there's two bridges, I think over by Logan yeah. sport that are named after him already. And, and so the, of those pieces um, we had uh, the COVID vaccine that, that, you know, it caused some, some stress in, in a has. lot of airmen life. And we had the KC 46 site survey that, that, came out to see if we were the the best base for KC 46 that came out. It was highs and lows, right? Yeah. It was a, Hey, you guys are great. You're doing great. Look, this place looks great and everything. And then you get the KC 46 decision, which comes out and kind of a shocker to all of us that, you know, Hey, we're, we're not number one on that list. You have, uh, you know, a one saying, Hey, we're going to, we have these amount of positions that are going away and then no, they're not going away, but yeah, they are going away and no, they're not. And, and, and still really don't have that, that solved other than right. the fact that we feel like they're safe right now uh, for the piece. You, you had um, two, we had two suicides in the, in the time of year. We had several deaths of family members that um, a couple from COVID and, and right. stuff like that. And then, and then what you talked about the tragedies of, you know, uh, your son passing and then mm -hmm. your father-in-law also passing. And that's a lot. <laughs> it's, it is a lot. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot. It would seem. And, and on top of that, we had, you know, the Snowvid 22 where, <laughs> you know, it's the, the, the base and Hey, we've got a mission that we need to, to continue to run. How do we, how do we, how do we do that? And, and so how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm doing yeah. all right. Um, you have to have coping mechanisms, right, yeah. as you go through. Uh, and I, just like other folks on this base, I've been taking, avail uh, taking advantages, advantages of the available resources that we have. Erin uh, Michael Jolliffe, she's on speed dial. She calls me, checks in with me yeah. every once in a while. I call her, talk to her. Um, it's very, been very helpful. Chaplain Campbell stops by every once in a while yeah. to say, hey, how are you doing kind of thing. Uh, you and I have a great relationship. I think, uh, as we've said before, when you are around somebody long enough, you can sense pretty quickly that, hey, there's something going on today. And right. maybe we need to go, hey, you all right? What's going on? Um, you know, let's go get a cup of coffee. Let's go to lunch, something like that. So uh, just working those coping mechanisms. Um, so let's, talk, let's talk about that a little bit. So what is, uh, you know, what's your coping mechanism? Like, do you have a routine that, you know, when you're in this routine, you're like, Hey, this is, uh, I know that if I, if things are going well, I'm okay to maybe be out of that routine a little bit, but if things go wrong, I gotta be in this. I, I would say my biggest routine has been running for me. Yeah. Getting out in the morning and running. And you're, um, you're interesting to judge that. And, and I'm not, I'm not a big <laughs> runner anyways, but, uh, it's interesting is he runs with, uh, no music. And, and he's got to be quiet. He said, it, it's just your thoughts, right? Just my thoughts. I like to hear the nature. I like to hear the sounds of things. Yeah. How do you hear it over your head? The heavy breathing? Like that That's, for me, that was yes. my question. <laughs> like I would just hear my own wheezing and be you like, just, am I really breathing that loud? <laughs> like, you know, so, uh, yeah, I, I really like to be able to do that. Um, you know, it's not like I get up in the morning and go, Oh, Rowdy. I get, yeah. I get to go run today. No, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna run today because that's that routine. Because I really think it affects your mental health when you're not using that in as a routine, as in a lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Um, because I noticed. Uh, remember, I had my the cancer on my mm -hmm. face, and I went through oh, yeah, all I forgot that. Forgot about that you surgery, had cancer right? at this point. It, 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 through the year too. Uh, that's a big one. I mean, and that put me out of running for you know several months. The doc's like, nope. I don't want you around. You no. I remember no, that. Yep. Uh, uh, activity like that at all. And you were pretty and religious about it before. I was, it, and I'm telling you, it's been tough to get back into it. Yeah. I'll be completely honest with you. 
Uh, but it as yeah, it, it, you have to make it part of your lifestyle because I, I do notice it. I remember years ago when I, I broke my leg and I couldn't run for, you know, several months. And my wife's like, you're kind of mean today. What's going on? You know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I think I know what's going on. It's because yeah. I haven't been able to get out and exercise. And that, that makes a difference. So you talked a little bit about the relationship that, that you and I have. And and I value that. And, and I've, As I've, do I, Chief. I value the, uh, the ability to be able to walk into your office and... Um, there's been a couple times this year where, uh, you know, for for you, I think it's more of a uh, I'll come in and if if you don't hear from me or you don't hear me running my mouth to somebody <laughs> is you'll come in or if my door doesn't open on the other side, you know, the door to the hallway doesn't open is you come in with your cup of coffee and you sit down on your, on the couch and you sit across the room and you're like, OK, how are we doing? Like a little vector today? check yeah. here, you know, yeah. like like are you? You got something that you're working on or, or is something working on you? Right. And, and I value that. And, and uh, you, you always seem to know the, the right direction to push me after that. You know, whether it's a, hey, you need to dig in here or you need to, you know, maybe need to take some time right. off and, and, and reset. And I, uh, you know, there's been a few times where I've been able to come into your office and, and, and return the favor. Right. And, yeah. So it's, it, it's that a, has uh, been, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, it's, it's usually a, uh, Hey, have, have you been able to run? You know, it's, it's, a, it's did you run today. It, yeah. Did yeah. you run? Did you run today? No. Huh. It, it's well, kind of showing. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a little bit, yeah. it, it's, it's coming out a little bit here. Uh, and so I, how do you think, for our team, for, for our Grissom team, they can have this relationship, you know, because I think some of it is, um, you know, we have the, the stress of the base and, mm-hmm. and, and pieces of that, but uh, we also have both have office jobs uh, we do. that, that we can walk back and forth. And uh, you know, there's, there's days where, you know, we work through lunch, but there's there's a lot of days that, you know, we get to go to lunch together. And, and so we get to know each other a little better that right. way. But but what about for the that, that first term supervisor that's out there maybe? And and he's like, yeah, that's great. It works well for, you know, the colonel and the chief. But how am I supposed to do that when, you know, I've got I, I show up on on the UTA mm-hmm. and I've got an airman. How do you see that going? Or do you have suggestions for that? I, so I would say yes. First off is tap into those resources that we have available, right? From the chaplain's office to the uh, to the DPH to several of the senior leaders and the chiefs around mm-hmm. here that we have that will go, hey, you all right? And sit down and talk with them. Because but how do they develop that part, right? So that I think that's the initial, um, the initial piece is how do you develop that relationship? Right? With those individuals yeah. or with... Um, yeah, with with the your your members, your your peers, your subordinates, uh, that piece when you're out here, you know, a UTA. Yeah, I would say, to me, it starts out by being humble to go. You know what? I don't have all the answers here, mm-hmm. and let's let's go and find somebody that might be able to give us some answers, and I'll walk with you. All right. Yeah. Uh, and that may be you saying, I have some of these issues, and I need to be humble here and go. I don't have all the answers. I need some help, um, and. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Uh, that is a challenge for some people, right? I will say it was a challenge for me going mm-hmm. through the death of my son. And as you know, it was very difficult for me to go, you know, when people want to start bringing out food for me and mm-hmm. things like that, that's not me. I don't ask for help like that, yeah. right? So that was very tough for me. And then, he, and I will say you pointed out to me, Chief, you know, don't rob somebody else's chance of giving a blessing to you. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. Tom, shut up, listen, and do what, uh, allow those people to give, uh, show love and care and support for you. Yeah. So I'm not turning it back to that, but I'm just saying that it is difficult, no matter what position you're in, to build that to relationship. To build that yeah. relationship or to be, uh, be humble and say, you know what, I need to look for those. Uh, reaching out for help is a sign of strength, not of weakness. Yeah. And so you look at these things and you're like, okay, um, you know, at, a, at an airman level or, or at a, a young officer level is, you know, we stood up there at the last commander's call and we talked about, you know, readiness. Yeah. 
right? And so probably made a few people mad, I guess, yeah, when we started yeah, there. Yeah, maybe maybe got a little bit under some skin under the skin there. But um, you talk about readiness, and it's like, hey, it, when my airman shows up, they, they need to go get their their physical or their labs done. Right. They got to do a fitness test. I need them to do their PME. I need them to do this. I need them to do that. But then when that airman comes in, and they, you know. Uh, Maybe they, they can tell something's off. You know, for you and I, it's one thing because, you know, if if you tell me to go home, I don't have any other bosses. <laughs> you know, Leah's the only one and, and that she could be like, no, you go back to work. But uh, which Leah is my wife. But it it, you know, for for the first line supervisor. Right. They, they may not have that opportunity to say, hey, you need to take a, you need to take time here. You need to, so, so where do you prioritize that? Um, you know, how do you, how do you prioritize that? I guess is, uh, if, if I'm trying to frame this question, right, is just where does it fit in the mission? Where does our airmen fit in their, their mental health, their well being? their, oh, where does it fit in? It the is mission? key to everything. I mean, if, if I don't have, if we don't have our airmen with their mind in the game and their, their readiness, right? Yeah. Their spiritual, mental, uh, everything, they're, they're a detriment to me for the mission, right? Because mm. they can't concentrate. Uh, if I have a maintainer out there that can't concentrate, he could get hurt pretty quick. Yeah, that, that would hurt me very much if I'm not setting the stage and setting it right and leading by example to go, hey, we have these resources available to you. Use them because your mental health is just as important as, a, as your physical health. Absolutely is important. Um, and you, and that has to be a priority just like the mission does. Yeah. Does that it, make sense? It does. It, it just, I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, it, it, go ahead, Josh. Well, uh, <clears throat> I think, you know, I, maybe the, maybe the question is more how, how do we empower supervisors to be able go. to make, uh, Certain decisions. Yeah. So we went to, so we went to the Chick-fil-A uh, training. Right. So Josh, Josh and I had the privilege of uh, going down and, and with the FSS and they were getting customer service training from Chick-fil-A. It was and great training it was, oh, too. It was phenomenal training. Great and training. And so the guy, um, the manager there said, hey, we empower every employee to delight. They, they have the power to delight. So if they meet a customer that uh, is, is having a rough day, if they're, you know, their order got wrong, if they're, if they just seem like they're off. Is they have the power to like they can they can give them a, a free drink or a free right. you know shake or something like that. How do we empower our airmen to delight? How do we empower you know that like what you were saying that first line supervisor to say, um, hey, this is this is the what you can do to help someone that's going through this uh, because they may not have a first line supervisor may not have the power to say, hey, you know what you need to go home. Uh, and, and take the day off, you know, that, right. that may not be within their, their scope of capabilities, you know? True. True. That's where I think the, like in case of maintenance, that's where flight chiefs come in. That's yeah. where the, the, uh, superintendents come in. It's where even the commander can come in and, and you can talk to the commanders. I think all the commanders have an open door policy that, Hey, you can come in and talk to them. Um, and it may be, so that first line supervisor may may not be able to go okay go home for the weekend, but they may be able to go hey at lunch, I want you to go by and stop by and talk to Aaron Michael Jolifer you know thirty minutes with or so to go to walk that. you and I let, let's I'm yeah. on my way back from lunch over the defect let's go by and just talk to her for a few minutes all right there's ways that you can do yeah. uh, insert yourself and insert those resources or at least highlight those resources to those individuals that uh, that might need those help need that help. Yeah, but I think it comes down to to knowing them, right? Right. Is if we if we go back to the empowered to delight, right? Is uh, I think we talked about it. Is it, it's hey hey you know the tech sergeant uh, Weaver here is is having a bad day. Is here's your milkshake, and he's like, that's perfect because I'm lactose intolerant, <laughs> right? It's knowing people is really what it takes. Um, you know, it it takes that knowing them, knowing what fills them up, right. and and knowing what vows they value. So for you, um, what recharges your batteries? <laughs> uh, so like I say, running does for sure. Uh, my faith, 
does recharge my batteries. Uh, my grandson, my kids, talking with my kids. Um, you brought it up last time, video games. I do like to do a little video game once yeah. in a while. Just by myself. I don't like to get online and do all that stuff. Yeah. I just like to... It the first person shooter to, kind of guy. Yeah. So yeah. it allows me to kind of... Okay, take my mental health and go, let's set that over here for a while, you know, so I can just uh, relax a little bit. Um, talking with my wife, doing stuff around the house. Um, I, I'm not a big hobby guy. I don't collect things or yeah. anything like that. But uh, And then just talking with friends uh, and things like that. What about you, Sergeant Weaver? What's the, uh, what's the recharge button? I obviously knew you were going to ask me this since we talked about it earlier. And yeah. I told you, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he does sit like, <laughs> right? He says, I don't know. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'll ask you yeah, on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks. I have no response. Thank <laughs> yes. you. Um, no, I, I honestly, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the, what the recharge is. I we, think we talked about this a little bit too, is a lot of times people, they see us, they, they see mm -hmm. me they, they, and they're like, man, that guy talks to everyone. He's an extrovert. You right. know, I've been described as an extroverted extrovert. Right. And, but if you look at what recharges me, for me, I love a good, you give me working on a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, or, or a good home project, but something where I'm working with my hands and there doesn't have there, nobody else has to be there. I, I love it. If my, you know, my, my boys or my wife wants to, and sometimes my wife just comes out and sits and we may talk and we may not, it may just be like, Tell me the tools that you need me to go get. And, and it just, uh, we talked about a lot of people see, like, I've got that 53 Ford and I like, you know, that I built and, and everybody's like, God, oh, you know, that's a neat truck. And it, it's, you know, five Oh all wheel drive, but they don't see that that was, you know, a time of my life that was super stressful. And that, that, that truck provided me so much recharging, like so much recharging. And I think for you, so I'm going to answer that for Josh, Josh, if you don't mind. Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. So as you know, uh, you and I will both come to them, to PA, and go, hey, we got this idea. We mm -hmm. got this, hey, can you do this video, do this? And each and every time they deliver, just like that, and I'm blown away by what I see. And I'm like, wow, he is really talented at this. He's really good at that. So I I would almost say that that your work in doing that is almost a release for you, Josh, because you're really good at it. It, I appreciate that. And it can be if we're, um, I've actually never thought about it that way. It's kind of a, if I've got a big video to edit, that is kind of a, yeah, hey, you're if in I goal. can shut the door. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I don't know if I've told, if I've told this story before, but uh, so when I was active duty, my last base at my office was in the very back of the building. So of, of our office. So if, you didn't see me in the morning, we could go a whole day and you'd be like, oh, is, is Weaver even here today? And I've been in that. <laughs> and my, when I would edit videos, I would shut the door so people would leave me alone while I was doing it. And my uh, my LT put a note on the door one day that just said M&M's in the lab. Yeah. And so that became the running joke that yeah. M&M's back in the lab, leave them alone. Yeah. So um, I, I, I do probably use that as some form of stress release. And I do work with my hands a lot, but I'm the same way as you where I can talk to anyone. But in those times I do like to be by myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, and, and I think you and I, I, you probably don't know this joke, but, uh, <laughs> Pammy and I will, uh, yesterday you had on your, you know, it was a little bit of uh, older rock music, uh, -huh. uh but some, some eighties. Classic rewind. Yeah. There's some, serious some eighties rock music going on in there. Uh, and I said, uh oh, Pammy, he's got Friday music on and it's Thursday. <laughs> it's going to be a good Friday. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, it's it, it. Music is a bit. And that's, that's for me. When That's I'm, a big outlet for me, too. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I just I like to have music. And I I uh, there's a series that uh, called From the Earth to the Moon. And they, and they put there was a secretary that put the different pictures of her boss on the wall and that would determine what mood the member that he was in for the day. So yeah. people come in and she'd have the picture of him with a stern face and people would walk away going, no, they're not, <laughs> yeah, not that, the day to talk to him. It's you and music. So that's me and music, <laughs> yeah, that's right? right? So you come in and, hey, I hear classical in today. Oh, he's in that kind of a mood yeah, today. Oh, yeah. he, he's got bluegrass playing today. Oh, okay. I get, you know. But so I feel like the the classical is more, uh, we're thinking through some stuff, right? Yeah. With you. And then that, that rock is, hey, we're getting everything done because- 
we're about to pull chocks and something good's going to happen. <laughs> so I know, you know, you, you've got a, a vacation coming up. So I, I hope Yeah, <laughs> I told Don, I said, uh, I'll, I'll believe it when we're sitting on the boat. So, yeah, so, he's, uh, so when you hear heavy metal, that's the, uh, <laughs> Hey, don't go in there today. He's not a heavy metal guy. Yeah. He's not a heavy metal. So well, maybe probably, you just haven't been there for that mood yet. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know. It, it Sergeant Saunders always gets a little worried when he comes up and hears banjos. He, he's yeah, like, he does, he's right? always like, I don't, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what uh, this means. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's not familiar with banjos. <laughs> so, uh, but it's it, so I, I think all of us have to find some type of release. You and it's uh, it seems like the the older you get, the more you recognize it. You know, and I look at that sometimes back in um, you know my my 20s and 30s, and I'm like, man, if I would have recognized how to actually take out my stress in a positive <clears throat> manner, you know, and, and it's, and there's boundaries, right? Sure. There's boundaries I set, like, like for me is if I'm having a rough day or, uh, um, or a rough time in our life is I don't drink any alcohol. Like it's just a boundary that I set is, is I don't ever want it to be a, I've had a rough day. I need a drink, right? I don't need a drink. I need to figure some things out. I need, I need to, I need to relax. Are there any boundaries that you've set that you're like, Hey, when I'm in this mood, Mm. I, I wouldn't say boundary as such. I'm the other way that the days that I don't want to go running are the days that I absolutely oh, yeah. need to go running to yeah. go, you know what? I really don't feel like it. <clears throat> I got to go run today because I don't feel like it. And I always feel better at the end of that. Uh, but boundaries. Yeah. There's, you know, if I'm upset or something and I'm drafting an email, I won't send it. I'll shrink it down and I'll come back to it maybe a couple hours later and go, eh, I don't really want to say it that well, way. There's several you know? times you and I both have said, we've got hey, those screens let, in our office. Let, come read this email before I <laughs> yeah, send that right. because I don't want to send the wrong message. Yeah, that's here, right. That's right. Read um, this. And, yeah. And see just, what my tone says. Yeah. And talking with my wife on things, you know, uh, you know what, honey, I've had a bad day. Let me give me about half hour before I start engaging on things, you know, yeah. and, <laughs> you know, I come home and she'll go, Hey, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I made about 25 decisions today, and I really don't want to make another decision. Yeah, 26 you make may, it today. may sit me over the edge. <laughs> yeah, you like, make one I today. You, yeah, I need, you to, I need you to decide. Like, and she I can just, see that now. She goes, you know what? I'm not going to ask. Well, what, we're going to do this. It's, All right. It's funny you say that because there's there's times where, you know, uh, same way with Leah. Is I'll call her. She's like, how's your day? And I said, I'm ready to come home, but I don't want to make any decisions. And she'll be like, okay. I understand that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then usually I get upset while we're eating for dinner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it takes, I think it takes some time, like going to see Erin, right? Yeah. And she sits down and she can point out those things because there are times when we're so close to it that, mm -hmm. hey, something's wrong here. I don't see it. And then you can talk to her and Erin go, man, have you tried this? Yeah. Have you tried this? Because this is what I'm seeing. You're like, you're right. I, that is exactly what's going on right now in my head. And I need to do that. So I think we can get so close to that problem and so close to ourselves that we're not seeing what's going on in ourselves, yeah. that it takes some of those people, a friend, a supervisor, first term supervisor, or just a coworker to go, Hey man, you all right? Yeah, that was not a proper this, response yeah, that you this just is what had. I'm seeing, like, yeah. yeah. I call it taking the hand away from the face. I heard, um, uh, an analogy one time is if you took your hand and you put it, you know, you're out at arm's length, or I guess your hand's always at arm's length, but <laughs> if you just straight your arm, right? That was Words easy. of wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deep thoughts. <laughs> if you, if you straighten your arm and you've got your hand out there and if you, if you're in a room and you, everything in the room is the rest of the world and your hand is your problems. When it's, when your arm's straight out is you can still see the rest of the room. But if you take those problems or you take your hand and you bring it right up to your eyes. That's all you can see. That's all you can see. Yeah. You cannot see any of the rest of the room. And, and we used to in the, uh, you know, in the, in the last position I was in and it, the, the human performance team that I worked right. with is we would say, hey, we need to get the hand away from the face. Like this, this, it seems like it's a really big deal. And sometimes it is a re really big deal. You talked about, you know, your son passing. Oh, that, that probably slams that hand in your, hand in your face. Yeah. You know, your, your father-in-law just passed like that, that slams the hand in the face. And we've got to have those pieces built in to where we say, okay, how do I get this hand away from my face? Because I'm making decisions based off of, I can't see anything. 
True. But I think the first step is you got to recognize that yeah. the hand is in front of your face, right? And yeah. that's where a lot of people have problems. And I even I have had problems. Like yeah. That. Um, recognize that that hand is in front of your face and, it, okay, I acknowledge it's there. Now what I need to do to get it away from my, and see the yeah. bigger picture. Here. How do I straighten my arm? Right. Right. Not put it at arm's thing, Josh. That was a bad analogy. Um, well, but, but you also have to have, if you have good enough relationships with other people, they're the ones that help you realize that your hand absolutely. is that Yeah, close. they start peeling a finger off and yeah. they're like, hey, right. hey, you see us over here? Like, yeah. You know, and we meet every week with our uh, airmen going out to the door, right? Yeah, for BMT. On Tuesdays. And what do I tell them every week? We are wingmen. We watch out for each other. And I don't, I don't just say that those aren't just words. Right. We live by those things, right? Yeah. Because we, I have people here that will check in on me. Hey, how are you doing? And I try to do the same. I, I reach yeah. out to them and go, you know what? You just didn't seem yourself today. And I just want to make sure you're okay. I have a running relationship with someone that's a TR that's in this wing because of walking by them uh, over at the DFAC one time and saying, hey, how's your morning going? And they were like, eh. Is it <laughs> so now we have a, a relationship we have where, a and and I would say conversation is, starter. Yeah. And it was like a, you know, I'm walking and I'm like, you know, it's kind of that's raise an eyebrow and then I turn around and I go, why eh? Nah, just stuff going on. Anything I can help with? What stuff? Uh, yeah. Like, you know, it, and, it, and, it, and it was. We ended up having a group to where the crazy thing is is and, and, you know, we're both big on our faith and, mm -hmm. and this is where I think, you know, uh, it, it, God does some crazy things yep. is the crazy thing is, is I was going through a stressful time here and that airman reached out to me on, on a text and just said, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and I was like, eh. <laughs> 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 and, and it was a follow-up of why just a Right. Like what, what can we do to help? And I'm like, I don't know if there's anything to do, you know, maybe, and we'll, I, I can pray for you. <laughs> Just knowing that, yeah. knowing that you cared enough to, to, to follow up with me. Take the time to take the effort to, the, to, to take time to pray for him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and, and we talk about those pillars all the time, right? And it's when that hand gets close to the face, pillars start suffering. You know, it's, it's that, that physical pill, pillar. We stop running, right? Cause all we can see is I need to solve this problem. I need, I need to solve this problem. But so I think the solution to that problem is to getting back into those foundational things to get in your mental health and make sure that that's good and your yeah. physical health and make sure that's good. And, and those I think are foundational to solving some of those problems or at least facing them. Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the backside of that, there's been a lot of good things that happened too. There has, there and has. Th this this wing has been. Uh, I know. I think I can speak for for both of us. Is it's been a blessing to both of us. I think it has. And, and even, um, you know, through some of the tragedies, through some of the stress, through uh, we've seen a lot of growth. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I, I love a uh, you know post-traumatic, there's post-traumatic stress, which most people are familiar with is post-traumatic growth is, is usually some of the best growth that you have in your life, but also in a wing is, you know, watching these airmen come together mm -hmm. over this last year. Um, do you have anything that sticks out to you? I know you just brought up the, the Corporal Sanchez piece was. Oh, that was, that was huge. That and, really and I think was needed huge. in the middle of a really time where, needed. where, you know, we were losing focus on had a lot of people that are confused, a lot, a lot of people that are upset. Yep. Um, I think it helps prioritize, okay, here's what really matters. Yeah. And here's a family that lost their loved one. You know what? My uh, spilling the coffee on my pants today, that's not so big. Yeah. So I, I can get over that, right? Yeah. And I'm not demeaning anybody's issue that no. they're going through, but I'm. it does help prioritize things. Because um, we, we talk about this a lot too, is, is stress is relative, uh, relative, right, to the right. person that has it. Correct. And so, you know you go through one of these, these family tragedies or loss, I may be going through, you know, a flat tire or, uh, you know, trying to get a bill paid. Right. It doesn't mean that, you know, your stress is way greater. It's, it's that, that story you relate about the, uh, the kid that where you just had that issue, yeah. the severe family issue. And yeah. that kid was said he was getting kicked off of his, uh, yeah. of his gaming team. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's all, it is all relative. And he, and he was hey, ready that's to end my it. world. Yeah. And, 
you and I may not understand that, but to him, it's very, very real. And so, the, yeah, we have to understand that everybody's uh, stress is relative, but I think it get back to the foundational things of if you can stick to those foundations, whatever that stress is relative to you, yeah. I think you can work through some of those things if you have know what resources you have available and use them. So we uh, we share I shared a, a devotional with you this morning about thankfulness, oh, right? Yeah, it was timing on it too, right? It's, Very good it, timing. Yeah, it's so we had just had some conversations, and uh, so we 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 talked about that. So, what are some pieces? over this last year that you're, you're thankful for, for being here, Chris. Uh, uh, how much time do we have? Yeah. As much <laughs> because, as you do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful for many, many things. I'm thankful for uh, guys in the office, the gentlemen in the office that are other uh, Christians that we can sit and pray with before we go to a meeting or yeah. if we're going through a stressful time, we're just going out to lunch. I'm thankful for the many folks that I've learned to uh, have had friends over the years at this base that have reached out to me and say, Hey, how you doing? Checking in. Um, I'm, I was humbled and blown away by the number of calls, emails, texts, flowers, food, uh, you name it, that we received after my son's passing. I just, I was blown away. I, I didn't know what to say. And it, it was, as you say, or as I told you, it's it's hard for me to accept that. Yeah. But I think it was a healing uh, thing to say, hey, there's people that you don't even know yeah. that are thinking about you and praying for you right now. And I'm like, wow, that's that blew me away. Right. Um, so I... There's some goodness that came come from that. Um, I think as we talked about, uh, we mentioned that uh, uh, the way my son was uh, for was uh, died. Uh, the circumstances surrounding that can lead to goodness for, yeah. in, uh, in this case, a potential uh, occupation or son uh, yeah. job for your son. It's so um, weird. Um, it it's, is so weird, it, right? It, it, and, and and weird, I guess is. Uh, thankful, you know, yeah. is, is, uh, you know, it asked me to, a favor of me and, and I, I went and, and did that thing, which led to a relationship with someone that then turned around and, and now and the my, guy goes, Hey, uh, you said your son's wanting a job. Hey, here yep. you go. Wow. Yeah. And That's so through, good. The, through this whole process, uh, you know, your child being affected, my child may forever also be affected, yeah. you know, from this and, and, you know, the, those pieces of thankfulness that if we, if we only focus, if the hand is so close to the face. We miss some of these. We miss things like, uh, you know, our IGI is one of the best in, or is the best yeah, in oh Africa. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fire department, you know, best They're, in Africa. You know, it's it's our FSS. We watched a, I believe, a watermark moment in, in 434th uh, F, uh, FSS was their annual tour that they just did yep. or after the last it was very structured. It was very, uh, it was action packed. We went for, we started with a, a group run. Right. So we went out and, and the, the Marines did some give us some little warm PT. ups with the Marines and the yep. PT in the morning. Yep. Did some PT with the Marines. Uh, I mean, just you name it. And, and that, that watermark moment, it's, you know, the, the changes and the, the, uh, the goodness from, for AMDS that they're, yeah. Their work, the, the the amount of work that we put on them with the the COVID pieces, and then still maintaining all these other, uh, all the other things that they have to do, the PHAs and the the yeah. normal vaccinations that they have to go through, and the and the documentation that yep. all goes with it, and still try to keep all, you know, they have lots of eggshells that they have to walk on too with yep. the HIPAA laws and things like that. That's challenging for them. Our Absolutely, cyber, our cyber warriors, you know, changed their whole career field yeah. over this last year you know, changed uh, their direction that they were at. Well, it's interesting when we, you and I went yesterday to see the firefighters doing their, uh, in that class training yeah. in the, uh, over in the nose dock there, we took over the JAG with us and I saw him later on the day. I said, Hey, what'd you think? And he goes, that was awesome. He goes, yeah. I just, I, I didn't realize little old Grissom here is training firefighters from around the country and around yeah. the world around for the that world. matter. Yeah, and he goes. I, I would have never, never thought that. Yeah, yeah. We Adva are advanced firefighter advanced survival. Advanced firefighter survival. Yeah. Exactly right. Uh, things that you would think you would need in firefighting yeah. survival. Yeah, and we're lucky enough to go over and, and I'm thankful enough to go over. Yeah. and uh, present some of them their graduation certificates yep. this afternoon. Um, yeah, that is. I'm, it's humbling to me. We did right? a, a CCF graduation. That was awesome. 
Yeah. How amazing. many people that we had that come up on that stage? It was like there. 90 people oh that we had, God. you know, and, and that, that graduated CCFs. I felt dumb. Yeah. I felt yeah. dumb with yeah. all these people yeah. walking yeah. across the so, stage with their and degrees. It was, and, it, and again, you know, I, I caught a lot of flack because I talked to almost every person that came up. <laughs> but um, there was a lot of people that we talked through through that process of just meeting them on stage where their career paths will probably change because of that short little handshake conversation, Absolutely. you know, of, Hey, is this what you do on the outside? No, I'm actually a pilot. Why don't you fly for us? Well, I really want to, but I don't know how. Hey, <laughs> see me I, afterwards. I, I know a guy. I, yeah, right? I, I, got, I got a guy that can help you with that. Right. And just all kinds of different, you know, what do you do on the outside? I'm a nurse. Well, you, you work in calm, you know, like, do you work at our hospital? Yeah, I'd love to. Well, I, just I so happens we, I know yeah. the commander. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, we had, we had that, we had, um, our EOD, you know, responds to presidential support stuff. And, and people don't realize that is if the president comes anywhere near us, a state near us, they're doing the EOD, the bomb sweeping and yep. stuff like that for it. Um, and I think we need to open up and ask our airmen about things like that. Right. Yeah. And listen to them. Um, they have great ideas. They have some awesome ideas, you know. And great careers. And great careers. I mean, that tragedy that we heard uh, when yeah. we were out at Ring Cross, when they, they mentioned there was a young airman from another base that said, you know what, I'm done. I, they don't ask me I can my mention opinion. the base if you want to. It's not uh, us. No. <laughs> <laughs> the wing commander is probably a friend of mine. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, hey, I'm done here. You know, they don't ask me my opinion on things. They don't, you know, they never ask me. I don't me feel valued. My, I don't feel valued, Right. And then they come back and they find out the individual is the vice president of Hallmark greeting cards. Yeah. Wow. You think they've got something to say at the table? Absolutely. Yeah. What a, what a loss that is. And that's why it, it pains me when I see discharge packages come across my desk because I am I think, you know what? I saw the look in their eyes when they were walking across that bomb run down at Lackland mm -hmm. and the pride and the, the excitement that they had. How did we go from there to this package I'm looking at? And, and I look at the mirror. Yeah. I look in the mirror and go, "How did I fail this airman? Yeah. What did I do to put him in this position? Or not value them? Or not value? Yeah, because that's, we that's usually what it is. Is, yes. is they, don't, they don't feel like their time is well spent out here, yes. right? But again, I mean, it, we could keep going on. You know, uh, the, the airman and family readiness, the SAPA oh. program, the emotional intelligence that's ran by Christy Shives and Amy Little. And, and, you know, just if you've not done that, I think there's an opportunity to do it. This UTA is it, it is a virtual reality, emotional intelligence that it is it is phenomenal. It's interactive. It's great. You get over there, schedule your, your team for that. But, you know, you got that. You've got you know all the things that we asked Mr. Sampson to do with, you know, the defect, the 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 gym. You know, the bring an archery the, range on it. All the FSS uh, excursions they set oh, yeah. up, horse riding and hang gliding and parachuting. Yep. My gosh. Yeah. So, so that doing a Kelsey's doing a great job over there for outdoor rec and, and Bruce at the gym, you know, just all those pieces that, that we've done. Then on top of all that, we have a successful ops and maintenance deployment. Right. That, that goes out the door. And, and, you know, those guys, you know, some of them still downrange, but, they're coming back to, you know, we, we always, one of the speeches I give before they leave is General Scobie, steal it from General Scobie is don't embarrass the patch. Yeah. Right. And they don't, they, they bring they back more people that are like, Hey, they, they I'd honor like the to patch and go, wow, those guys are pretty sharp. Yeah. yeah. I'd like, to, what's this Grissom all about? Yes. Yeah. I worked with some of their people and, and things were phenomenal. Um, and so uh, there's all of these pieces, you know, our, our air crew flight equipment, you mm -hmm. know, is oh, yeah, Mike know, Pershing. Mike Pershing. Is, oh my gosh, he's been a master friend Pershing. for years. Yeah, senior master per is is the guy that they call and say, "Hey, if we're going to set up something new, you're the man." Yep. You know, you're you're the man for that. And, and so, I, I think we look across this wing, and and it's sometimes easy to and, and when yeah. we look at our career, sometimes it's easy to bring that hand up to the face and say. These are the things that are wrong with the Air Force that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. But here's some things that are right. Yeah. With the Air Force we are right now. Yeah. When we pull that, we put that hand out at arm's length and we say, yeah, but look at all these other things. Mm -hmm. Look at, look at all the, we've had that privilege of seeing in this last year, I think two um, of our airmen received their citizenship in yeah. the United States. How cool is that? Yeah. That to really be a cool. part of that? Yeah. Like to, to that just. That they'd want us to be a part of that. 
Yeah. Right? That's that's yeah. even more impressive to me. So And I look at, you know, Turn Weaver, they, that's a that's the big part of your job, right? Right. Is is hey, how do I capture these things to where people see that there's value in what they're doing? You know, they're they're not just, you know, well, I just what do you do? Well, I just go out and I'm in I'm in transportation or I'm in, you know, LRS. I don't, you know, well, you don't do anything with the airplanes? No. The heck you don't. And and that's yeah. that's the point that we make with our yeah. young airmen going out the door every week. It doesn't matter what job you you have. It really doesn't. Doesn't okay, you're not a pilot, you're not no. a maintainer, you're not a doesn't matter. If we don't all pull together and do our individual jobs, those airplanes out there don't turn a wheel. There's no way. So we have every person I want if I can try to emphasize that with our folks, every person that we have is so valuable to this wing as we've gone through this RER process, you know, mm -hmm. we've been trying to, I've been trying to be as respectful and dignified to these folks as all of our folks as we can to say, look, whatever, whatever you decide, we're going to support you. Yeah. But in the end, I really don't want to lose you. You are valuable to our team. I want you around. Yeah. And I, I think that's evident in some of the, the things, sir, is, uh, you know, some of our members that, that, you know, have made that tough decision mm -hmm. and, and maybe they're parting ways with the air force. And, and some people would look at that and they would be like, you know, well, aren't you angry at those people? And then they, they come up. I mean, yesterday we received coins from coins from that, one of the members. Yeah. Yes. From one I'm of the like, members wow. was like, thank you for, you know, respecting me and, and value. And it's just like, I, man, I, I feel terrible that we can't, yeah. we can't keep, but, there's a whole nother world out there that, you know, if we can just create great people, uh, they're going to spread the word. And, 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 you know, we continue to have great people here at Grissom. We do. And, and, and so, we have to continue to nurture that. Right. Yeah. And continue to uh, push the education, push the, push those opportunities to push us outside our comfort zone sometimes. Right. Because that's yeah. how we grow. When we push us outside of, Hey, uh, this is all I've ever known. Well, maybe you ought to try this. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe you're good at it. You never know. So let's talk about that. We're we're uh, we got an exercise coming up. We do. It's going to push us a little bit. It will push right? us a little we're, bit. We're going to have to flex some muscles that we haven't flexed in a little bit. And for some people, it'll be the first time they've flexed those muscles. Yeah, right. It'll ever... be a crawl, crawl, walk, run. Yeah. And so it's, I think a, a lot of times it's easy to put that hand up to the face and say, "Hey, uh, exercise." Oh, that's I'm super excited about throwing all my Kim gear on in you know and getting super hot and, you know, and annoyed at a lot of other people for not knowing how, what they're supposed to be doing. But I tell you, when same exercise that uh, similar exercise they did last year in the summer at the end of that exercise, I saw nothing but smiles. Yeah. There was well, a lot this of, was great. Yeah. Even though they were sweating and things like going through those. Let's things. Say they, you, you get out of it, what you put into it. Yeah. You put in a lot of negativity. You're going to get a lot of negativity. out. Right. You put in a lot of, Hey, this is the time for me to help other people that, Maybe this is their first time. This is a time for me to get ready. So when that call comes, I'm ready. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like we talked about last time when our jam starts playing, we better be ready to dance. Exactly. And it, yeah. uh, it was pointed out to me yesterday. And I I, I guess I had forgot it that uh, another member that uh, had said, you know what? I'm, that was a great message on readiness. And I've really taken that to heart because I've gone through, I noticed that my will was not up to date and all those things. So yeah. I'm really trying to, trying to take that on myself. And he goes, because I remember but years ago when 9-11 happened, so it was an older gentleman. Yeah. Um, he says, when we got mobilized, um, the fo all of us that were ready to go and had all our stuff done, we were able to spend more time with our family. Those folks that didn't have all their stuff done were taken away from their family and spent most yeah. of their time getting ready, and they didn't have that time with their family. I'm like, that's that's significant. So so we got that exercise. Uh to look forward to, because right. again, that's some resemblance of uh, a new normal, right? That we're getting back to uh, community college or there there's Columbia college. I hesitate to say normal as yeah. I always say, normal is a setting on a washer or dryer. Yeah. Uh, but we start to get into some, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. some routine. All yeah. right. And, and what we're used to on a routine. Yeah. So when we go through, yeah, the, the exercise, I think will be, give us a little bit more focus. And mm -hmm. especially now that we're getting on the, hopefully in the backside of the COVID where we're now at HPCon Alpha and hopefully masks are in the, in the rearview mirror. I don't know. I no, hope hanging from the rearview mirror. But uh, yeah, we have spring coming up, which is, which is awesome. Summer's coming up. It doesn't uh, feel we're a little looking, springy outside. 
It that's doesn't a little, yet. Little chilly but outside. It, we had a few days where it yeah, was up there, but that's Indiana. Yeah. Uh, but we have lots of. We have. We're looking at the uh, doing a family day in the fall yeah. that uh, we can bring the families out and celebrate with folks. Yeah. Um, we took the input that we had from our folks over the at the commander's call about UTAs and the super UTAs, and we're taking that input and we're using that to build the schedule FY twenty three yeah. UTA schedule to go. Hey, this is what people want. Let's let's deliver. So yeah, I think people at, will be surprised or happy with that. Looking at doing like a dining in or uh, there in February. We're for looking at board the, and, do a combined banquet. dining in and uh, uh, quarterly annual awards yeah. banquet yeah. Um, with with uh, family and friends and we got, so forth. There we got Columbia College that has That's agreed awesome. to come out to. You know, they're going to give courses on the base and and uh, so it'll be instruction opportunities for. People who you know uh, are are SMEs or, or can instruct at the college level, and then um, I don't know if you saw that there, but I don't know what it takes to be a college instructor. So I just said that whatever it takes. I don't think uh, it actually takes much. It's you know hey, not easy. state funded. Easy. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, and, and is it a coincidence that Columbia College from Columbia, Missouri, uh, the area where I'm from? Yeah, weird. That actually is. It is a coincidence. So, because uh, <laughs> Trump was the one that came up with. Sorry, Trump was the one that did. Parks. So, yeah, he's there. Oh, yeah, we'll go there anyway. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, they were probably like, he's not educated. <laughs> Why would we go there? <laughs> or maybe he needs to be educated. So let's go there. So uh, we got the college coming here. Uh, a lot of, uh, like you said, outdoor rec opportunities, horse riding, oh, yeah, and, uh, hot air balloon rides, and go kart racing, which nobody's really beat me at yet. So uh, a Ooh, lot of challenge things. accepted. Yeah, bring it. <laughs> uh, a lot of things that are that are out there. So I, I wanted to end with uh, some positivity and do a little something called uh, favorites, if that's okay, okay. with you. So we'll kind of run down a list and we'll figure out what your favorite is of that. So we'll start simple. Start slow. Uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, I'd say my favorite color is red. Red? The dream? Right, it's red. Yours is red yeah. too? Mine's well, silver unless right you ask my daughter. If you ask my daughter, it's green. I'm not sure where that ever came from. Because uh, you're, now for, you're uniform all I, the time. I guess. So for the last seven years, my favorite color has been green. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, red, green. What Christmas. Yeah. What? Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, what's your favorite genre of music? Uh, that is a tough one because I. It, it depends well, on it's what mood I'm tougher, in, right? Sir. It's going to get tougher. Um, I. I would say my always go back to is classical. I just okay. love, I can, I can let my thoughts drift in classical. So, what about your favorite song? Um, that would be, uh, let's get together by the young bloods. Okay. You know that song, Josh? I do not. Yeah. Do you even know what it's genre old, it is? That's an old 60s song. I so. do not. There you go. <laughs> What's your favorite you can genre? YouTube it. I think it, it depends on the weather. Yeah. Like, um, I would say most of the time I like, uh, don't judge here, hair bands. Love mm -hmm. hair bands. Yeah. Um, but to paint palm weather, I'll do country. I can do hair bands. I can do. Uh, All right. I, I'm going to show my age. What's a, what's a hair band? That's the 80s rock band that they do their hair all up. Oh, and yeah. hair band. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Kiss. Of, I didn't know if that was a different spray, gender or yeah. what. So, all right. Bon Jovi. That was when yeah. I had hair, too, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Well, you you could have yeah. been in a hair band. Yeah. Yeah. Now you you're, to, hey, time's passed. You're still you'll have to see stomach. me in my uh, baby blue tux when I went to uh, in my high school prom. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, all right. I can picture is double double right now. <laughs> Did you have <laughs> with hair? Yeah, yeah. Nice. And my favorite song is going to be oddly specific. It is um, knocking on heaven's door, yeah. Guns and Roses. However, I can only watch it on YouTube because it's the live in Tokyo okay. uh, oh. version. It's, it's about a, thirteen yeah. really minutes specific long. version. Yeah, yeah. Wow. very very specific. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my, I think my favorite genre is probably country, just because I love stories and and it, I feel like every song tells a story. Uh, and then. My favorite song also is kind of, it, it goes back and forth. Like I would almost say Larry Fleet's um, Where I Find God right now is is one of my favorites that probably gets played the most. But right. my all-time favorite is uh, Leonard Skinner's Simple Man. Yeah, it's a good yeah, that, one. That's, you know. You know what you get when you play a country song backwards, right? Yeah, you get your, get your wife back, your dog back, your, your dog, car yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have a drinking problem. You don't have a, yeah. You, you have a job. <laughs> All those things. Um What's your favorite type of food? Um, 
That's a tough one too because I love to eat. Um, I I love like the Japanese uh, hibachi, hibachi grill stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I love good. that. Love it. Yeah. What about you? Mexican. Yeah. Mm, I love Mexican. Man, me too. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't um, love me back often, but yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at, we're right up there with been Asian food. So yeah, that's it. It's. I like Asian food a lot yeah, I too. too. Yeah. yeah. So I love uh, Mexican too. What's your What's your uh, your last meal we talked about this <laughs> if you, if you, i don't know why that is so uh like if you had a last meal like if i had to, a last meal yeah what would it be uh that's a stab in the dark i don't know uh steak probably a nice steak yeah i could i could go with uh with a good steak too that's what i would have said too i had done a prime 47 the other day and it was oh. a big old steak yeah that thing was so good so you just swallowed really hard, like your mouth's watering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 9 48 in the morning. Yeah, yeah. What time is it? Lunchtime yeah, already? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a very difficult one, I'm sure, too. What's your favorite podcast? Oh, of course, Fuel is. Right. Right. Yeah. Come on now. Josh, what's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not Fuel. Like, it, that's all he listens to is podcast. It is all I listen to. Um, I don't know. I, I go back and forth between. Um, the Bill Simmons podcast and the Ryan Rosillo podcast are both yeah. just sports podcasts. Right now, my favorite is, uh, and I, I jump all around, but uh, Smartless with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and uh, uh, Sean Hayes. It, it just, there's no thought process to it at all. There's none. There's I did no- listen to the one you sent me and- uh, yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. I need some intelligence yeah, there was to no, go into it. <laughs> there was no I need some substance yeah, there. There, there, was, was there was no intelligent life form, whatever. It, <laughs> it literally not. is a bunch of people just laughing like yes. this. Like, yes. Not like this. So um, That's funny. I see some of those. Uh, watch YouTube every once in a while, and then some of the stuff that pops up, it says it's time to leave Earth, and you see some of the things, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the crazy stuff people are doing. I'm yeah. like, yep, okay, time to leave Earth. Yeah. Uh, we'll... we'll uh, We'll go with this one to kind of wrap it up is um, what's your favorite place to vacation? Mm. Uh, I, I would say right now it's probably when uh, us going down in the Caribbean, you know, yeah, doing a cruise or something cruise like or that something, in, yeah. the, in the warm weather. That's, yeah. it, and it's, you're talking about not making any decisions. <laughs> the cruise, the toughest decision is, do I go back through the food line? Yeah. Or do I have the yeah. answer is always yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or steak for lunch. Yeah, what, yeah. what should I do? Oh, yeah. And to or that both. one, yeah. and to yeah. that yeah. one, the answer is yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 What about you? Um, Valdez, Alaska. Yeah. I've never been there. Oh, you are missing out. I, it's pretty up there because we went up to uh, Kodiak up there here yeah. last last May when we went up and saw our yeah. IRC folks up there, and they were just. Yeah, when you said Beautiful. we, as I was scheduled on that, sorry, I, I got bumped. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's no, it's 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 gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, and yep. it's um, it's seriously, it's like a different world. Mm-hmm. There's there's very few people. See, but I'm a hot person. I'm a hot and sun. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you're talking te- weather. Can't always yeah, be hot and sun though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we did our 30 year anniversary, and we went to Scotland. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, I that love was Scotland. Awesome. Was there, Two yeah. weeks in Scotland. Yeah. It's and good. ending it on the last night was the uh, uh, Royal Military Tattoo in, in the Edinburgh Castle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a what a great trip that was. So I know uh, Sergeant Weaver is just like me, and he's thinking that uh, you have a tattoo. Uh, that's no, not, whoa, whoa, no, whoa, whoa, no. yeah, Royal yeah. Military Tattoo. It's a uh, when the different bands and different marching pipe and drum bands yeah. that participate and come up and perform yeah. in front of In our of heads, so. we pictured a like a no, tattoo a, convention. No. Where everybody you will was not getting find a tattoo on this body. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you that will not find like, a tattoo. He's got a at tattoo of Ireland somewhere. No. So all right. Uh for me, I'm I'm a you know, any hot and sunny with you, a, you know, a beach. And so I I like Cancun. Uh, but uh we did a couple of cruises over or I've actually done one cruise, but a couple of cities down in, down south and I loved it. So uh and so, I, I would say my second my Instead of saying warm places, I would say any place where I go with my wife. Yeah. Right. And that could be Scotland. That could be yeah. uh, because there are places I've been in the military and go, man, I wish my wife were here seeing yeah. this because she would love this. Well, yeah. I, 
I can appreciate that. And, and, uh, Noah and Don, I'm sure she appreciates it too. And Josh and I both appreciate you getting us in trouble with our wives. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I'm was, glad that you brought yeah, it up because that's how I'm sitting here going. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. That, that's, that's great. Well, so. you know what though? Valdez is her favorite place to uh, vacation too. So boom, There's got it. You're in trouble. Yeah. We're not. I love you, Leah. That's all I'm really going to say. Uh, <laughs> sir, uh, we, we end this with what you're loving. Um, but before we ended, I just want to say, uh, I appreciate it. We talk about it a lot is I, I value our friendship. I do as well. I, I Chief. value, uh, the mentorship that you've given it and in the direction that that's come both ways us. though, right? Yeah. It's come both ways. And, uh, and I look forward to, uh, another year. And, I do and, as well. I'm looking forward to where, uh, as you and my men of faith looking forward to seeing where God's going to take this wing. Yeah. So what are you loving? Uh, right now, I'm just loving that uh, it's coming time that I'm going to be getting out on a uh, plane going down to Miami to help jump on a boat. Favorite song, uh, leaving on jet plane right yeah, now. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just loving being the wing, being uh, the humbling experience and the opportunity to lead the men and women of this wing. Um, and that's that has what kept me going. Yeah. I guess there are days when I'm like, ah, crap, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I don't like this. But they expect me to come in and run this wing. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and just getting in that routine. So. Sergeant Weaver. Okay. So I've got two because the first one I'm not going to fully say because I don't want to jinx it. Because oh, like you said you. at the beginning St of the podcast, by, we're doing this early. Home, stand by for a, uh, some type of sports analogy. It, is a sports, <laughs> it does have to do with sports. Uh, so first off, Kentucky lost. So oh, man. awesome. Yeah. Gosh, shout, so out great. To, shout out to Doug Hayes, yeah, uh, public out. affairs, shout Josh's out. boss. He's a big Kentucky fan. So. Uh, but the, the other part of that is there's another team that's playing in Sweet 16 tonight. Not going to say names, nothing. Their Purdue. colors are uh, black and gold. Uh, so loving the little run that's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, and the other part of it is actually still to do with basketball is, uh, my daughter started taking uh one-on-one -on -one lessons and I'm saying she's seven years old. I'm sitting here watching her, uh, Wednesday night and I'm going, Oh, I don't want to get my hopes up here, but Holy smokes. Can she handle the ball for a seven year old? Yeah. And I'm like, this may be our shot. This yeah. is our <laughs> this shot. Is, <laughs> this is my this retirement is, yeah. right there. <laughs> you know, seven years old. She yeah. Cross over yeah. with both hands and she's even hitting on a 10 foot goal. And you know, she's like three and Josh a half. She's watching the final four to see where his daughter's going to go exactly. to college. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, so you got, the, out for her. Yeah. <laughs> you got the women's final four next weekend too. So, uh, yeah, just, basketball right now it's my yeah. favorite time of year uh for me i you know we talked a little bit about it yesterday is uh you know brady it was kind of having a tough time you know and, and it's part of that being 18 and and learning life and stuff and as i don't love it because the hand gets really close to the face uh, in the middle of it I, I love how our family grows and and, and grows together and uh, it, and helps us when one person struggles in our family, I feel like we all learn. Right. And, and, and we all come out better on the other side. So, so I'm loving that right now. So, uh, and you know, nothing that draws a family together more than, uh, uh, nine and a half hours in a vehicle. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> have fun. Yeah. I'll turn the radio off. It will set in silence. He's touching so, me. He's yeah. touching yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get so, in your own space. Yeah. Silent game. We have, we have uh, very large vehicles for that reason. <laughs> that's it's, good. it's one that they don't even get to set in the same row. It's like, well, you, <laughs> one of you sets you the second, one now, sets in the third. You're not even on the same side of the vehicle. So, well, sir, thanks a lot for, for taking time thanks, out of your Chief. day. I and, appreciate it. And, Josh, uh, thank for you doing this. for doing all this because I know this takes a lot of work on your part. Yeah, it, it definitely does, especially yeah. trying to edit out all the times that I laugh and say stupid things. And or, then he's yeah. like, eh. or, uh, That's the majority of the editing that happens. Is that <laughs> is editing out me laughing? <laughs> I, no, oh, sorry. I was yeah, referring exactly. to the stupid things you yeah, say. So I think <laughs> one, of your, one of your podcasts needs to be all those outtakes that you edited. I, I, would, to put, well, I don't, back I don't actually edit those yeah. things out. Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, and, Chief. And, uh, Thanks, Josh. Have a great day. You too. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, that recap with uh, Colonel Pemberton over the last year. And I enjoyed that conversation. I get to talk to him every day. So uh, it's but I, I always enjoy having a conversation like that and, and bringing people in on it. Uh, Josh, you just brought up a good point. And I know you're not going to like me for this, but uh, talk about we, we talk about a lot of resources. But but say what you just said a minute ago. Um, yeah. So basically I was saying, cause we, this isn't the first 
we've had 12 podcasts now, and I'm going to say that on at least six of them, it could be more, but on at least six of them, the resources that are offered here uh, or at every base mm-hmm. um, have been mentioned. Right. And I, I just really, I, I really believe that those are so incredibly valuable, but you don't, you as, as an airman, as a supervisor, as a superintendent, as a flight chief, how can you know where to send someone if you don't know what that resource offers? Mm. So how can you, I mean, we talk about Erin all the time because she is, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably the best at what she does yeah. in the whole, in the whole air force. Yeah. Um, how do you know that she's the right person to, to take someone over to talk to her if you haven't talked to her before? You know, and I think we get caught up a lot of times in the, what these resources are. We all know they're there. Do you know what they do? Yeah. Do you know what they offer? What they can do. What they can do. Right. So we talked about that the other day is, um, I was talking about my TSP and, and talking about the financial services that are here. And I was like, wow, I just, I really don't know a whole lot about TSP and, you know, I invest in privately and, and then get to talk to it. So we, we offer a course that's how to be a millionaire through TSP. I don't, I wonder how many millionaires we have sitting here, but they teach you how to go about it. And so you're absolutely right is knowing that. And I think understanding those resources, but even more, not even more, but with that is understanding your people. Of course. And you've got to understand that, that what works for Colonel Pemberton and I didn't work for the last boss that I have. You know, her and I had a, a totally different relationship and it still is going on and it, and it is, you know, unique in its own way, but there was different triggers that she needed and different or different things that she had and different things that, you know, I was at a different point in my life and stuff like that. And the same thing, what works for Colonel Pemberton and I may not work for you and uh, Doug Hayes and, and um, you know, or, or, you know, the listener and their supervisor or their subordinate or their peers. Right. So, so it's, so it's two parts. Right. It's not only knowing the resources, what they offer, but it's knowing your people to know when they need or when you when you and, and you know, anyone else that you're working with, when you need to have that conversation yeah. of like, are you doing all right? And when the answer is no, now you know them well enough to ask the question and you know the resources well enough to, hey, let's go talk to this person. Yeah. It, and, and that's key. It, we, I think they said over at the. um at the, the Chick-fil-A training that we had was deliver the mail to the right address. Yes. Right. Is great. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Deliver the mail to the right address. And, and then we added to that at the right time. Yep. Right. And, and so knowing the right timing with that person, knowing the person well enough to know what they're willing to accept and whether you need to walk with them or whether you can just tell them to walk or, or what it may be. But I'll tell you to wrap this up is uh, I've enjoyed being here over the last, you know, uh, almost 18 months. And there's not a lot of stuff. If you've listened to these, you, this statement will not come as a surprise to you. There's not a lot of things that I know. Uh, and a lot of, not a lot of things that, that I can guarantee you. But the one thing I do know is no matter what you're going through, you're not meant to go through it alone. And as a team, we can get through, I think anything. And it's us working together to utilize the resources to um, to capitalize and to maximize our time here on UTAs uh, and to make this a place that that people feel valued and that they want to come to work at. So uh, find those ways and find someone to walk through, uh, you know, a difficult time with. And um, and we, we are so thankful for you guys. And hopefully. I think we're going to supposed to have like one sunny, good day of the UTA. So uh, get out and enjoy it a little bit. There, we have a Frisbee golf course now on base. It's frothing or I think that's what that's what? called. Frothing. I don't know. <laughs> it's like golfing, but with an F for Frisbee. Oh, for fr- frothing. I've, I think there's a Seinfeld episode about it. I've, <laughs> froth. Maybe I've froth. I don't know. I've never Frisbee golfed. Yeah. So maybe we'll do that so, someday. Yeah. But uh, appreciate you guys and, and thanks for listening and we'll see you next month.